Hi and welcome to my second video in this Ruins of Elixir series where we're looking at the scenery for Age of Sigmar. This is the box set of scenery you can currently buy from the Games Workshop website. It retails for £90 and includes five different models. A pair of Baleful Realm Gates, the Ophidian Archway, a numinous Oculum and a Dragonflight Dose. In my first video, it just was just a basic unboxing video, and in this video I'll be doing a short review of what it's like to build each piece of scenery, and towards the end of the video I'll just show you how it looks like in compared to some scale from other pieces of scenery currently available. The first thing to notice about this box set is that you are going to get covered in mess. It is really messy. Um, there is a lot of trimming, and mold trimming to do for all the pieces and lots of mould lines to get rid of, which is the same for all models that we buy, but uh, I was not prepared for the sheer amount of plastic dandruff I was basically covered in. So when you're building this, you either want it to be somewhere where you can easily clear it away or somewhere that it doesn't matter that it stays messy until you're ready to finish backing up all the bits of crap that uh, come out with this. The first model we're going to talk about is the pair of Baleful Realm Gates. And as I mentioned in the first video, these are pretty simple to build. There's only a couple of pieces. Uh, most people won't have any trouble at all. There's only really two things I want to talk about with this model. The first is that when you're gluing this together, the front and the back of the gate sometimes are bowed outwards slightly, so you have to apply quite a bit of pressure just to keep them together while you're gluing them. I've got quite small hands, so it was quite difficult for me to hold all sections of the gate together at once, but most people are probably not going to have much trouble with that. It's just something to be aware of when you're gluing it together that you don't want any lines that you need to fill, gaps that you need to fill along the bottom here. The main thing to notice is that my realm gates don't have any pieces on the top here. When I was cutting the sprues out, I didn't realise that this was actually a piece to be used, and I discarded one. I've still got this one here, which is meant to go here. When you glue them together, there's actually two pieces of plastic that stick up out of the top. Uh, I couldn't see any function for those when I was gluing mine together, so I cut them off to create the top flat, and then discovered this piece later on after I was throwing away all the used sprues. I was like, ah, that's actually a piece. So when you're cutting out your round gates, you might want to keep a note of this piece. There's a skull on the top and two holes underneath, and that just goes on the top there. I actually quite like how it looks without it on, so I'm not overly worried. I'm not sure I'm going to glue that one on yet. I'll have a decide once I've painted this one up, and we'll see how it goes. And just for scale, I've got a Tomb King's model here, and you can see she fits just nicely here. And that's the Belfour round gates. The second piece we're going to talk about is the Ophidian Archway. This looks like quite a simple model, there's not that many parts to it at first glance, but it was quite tricky to put together. The uh, individual wall sections need to be glued to the base slabs, which you can see here. Uh, according to the instructions, so I glued each piece of wall to its individual base slab, for the pillars and the wall sections, and then glued the sections together. If I rotate this model around, you can probably see that there's quite a few gaps in the joins just from gluing it together. These could probably easily be filled up if you wanted to with the green stuff or muddling putty. I've decided not to because now that the model's finished, you see it's quite sturdy, it's not liable to fall over. So once I've uh, base coated it in black, I might have another thing depending uh, how it looks once it's painted, so I might have a think about that. When you build this model, you can actually build it in a few different configurations. So I've got this wall here coming back, and if you wanted to, you could have the wall on this side coming back 90 degrees as well. You could also have the wall coming forwards, or you could indeed have both pieces coming outwards. I probably wouldn't recommend that configuration because it'd probably make the balance a bit dodgy, whereas having this one at the back means it's probably not going to fall over. You also have this platform, which you can stand models on, and it's double-sided. I've got mine with the scroll on the top because that's the one I like the best. But you could have it the other way up if you wanted. I'll show you that bit in here. So you have scrolls on the top with some lettering, and on the underneath it's uh, a dragon motif with like a sword. As you can see, the panels are all really detailed. It's quite a high relief on the sections for the outside of the wall and uh, what would have been uh, painted on motifs on the inside of the wall. For ease of building, it wasn't that bad, I'd probably rate it like a 6.5 out of 10 just because it was a little bit tricky with the pillars and the 45 degree angles whereas the round gates are an easy 9 out of 10 on an easy to build status. The next model I want to look at is the Numinous Oculum and this is easily the most complex model to build out of the whole set. 
you've got uh, four individual wall pieces, one, two, three, and then this little piece on the end. You've got pillars that hold the sections together. You've got three platforms that, to be glued on, which your models can stand on. And the dome is comprised of six pieces plus the three decorations around that edge. Now, given the problem that I had with my Ophidian archway, I actually decided to glue this in a different way to those stated in the instructions. I glued all the walls together and all the base slabs together, which means I don't have many gaps at all in between my wall sections and the slabs like I do with the, ocula uh, with the archway, which is good. However, then I did create some problems when I was gluing the globe and the platform. The most glaring problem you can see is this gap in the platform. So I couldn't get them to match up when I'd already glued the walls by then. I mean, it's nothing major, again you could probably fill this in with some modelling putty or rough up the edges so it looked like a bit of the platform had fallen away. You can see you've also got this large section here, like the other sections in the archway, it's also double sided. You've got the similar scrolls that you can find on there and this one with some lines and comet designs. I prefer the scroll design but in when you glue it on the way it's cracked away here, it made it easier for the glue points to have the comments on the upside, so that's what I did here. This floor section I would recommend not gluing on until you've painted the model. It easily fits on here, there's quite a few glue contact points and I don't think it'll go on with any difficulty, but once you've glued that on there is absolutely no way you could paint the bottom of the floor, and so if you looked at it from this way it would be unpainted. So you might want to leave that piece off to last, which will make it easier to paint the inside of your dome and the floor piece. The other thing to note with this is the uh, the dome. It's made of six pieces, three at the bottom and three at the top. I glued the two side pieces on and then was having trouble with this third piece, but it might have something to do with the way that I glued my walls. Luckily the glue is still tacky, so I was able to just reposition it slightly. And then while that was tacky, I found it easier just to put the three pieces together here and just glue the whole thing together to create a complete sphere. There's a couple of problems with the joins here, but they're really not noticeable. Uh, mainly because they've got these decorations that cover them afterwards and secondly because it wasn't that bad in the first place. Um, I found it quite easy to hold the whole dome in place until the glue set enough for me to let go. So that's something you might want to consider is to do the whole dome in one go. When you're first doing it it's a bit awkward to figure out which piece goes where and which orientation so just dry fit everything to make sure everything goes exactly where you would like. Again, look at the scale model here, you can see she fits on there really nicely and it's a, it's a really nice big sturdy model. Like the archway, you, there's a couple of ways, configurations you can do this. You don't have to have this wall coming in at a, a 90 degree angle, you could have it going straight backwards. You don't have to put this on here, you could just have a dead pillar and then have a section of wall I saw someone did. And there's also a couple of ways where you can have the platforms coming in. These are all detailed in the instruction books, but this is probably the most common configuration that you'll see. Okay. And the last piece I want to talk about is the Dragon Fate Dias, and this is easily my favourite piece from the collection. It's a really big, impressive model, all on its own, even without any models on there. It's going to be a joy to paint, I think, really nice chunky pieces. And was, as I said, was probably the easiest one to paint out of everything. This one I'd probably give a, a build a 5 out of 10. The actual model fits together really nicely, but user error could probably create quite a few problems there. So Dragonflate Dias again comes in lots of pieces but these ones fit really well together. Each dragon and one of its wings comes individually so that gives you five, five pillars, five wings and the five flames on the top as well as the centerpiece for the dais is individual and the stairs and the base is another three pieces. However the balance for this model is so excellent that if I just take this like this and it'll come apart like this. There's absolutely no glue required to hold the two model sections together. So when you're building, you can easily keep them separate and glue this section one by one. It rests on its own. And you can do the stairs, which again, when I glued the stairs on, they held themselves in position without me having to hold them at all. It was the easiest model I've probably ever put together in my Games Workshop life. As you can see, the base here is really detailed with lots of text and this bubbling pool. And if you were to have the top of the dais already glued on before you painted it, I think it would make it really awkward. And from a transporting point of view, it's probably much easier to keep them separate. And there's no disadvantage to doing this either, as you can see if I can just get this model and just 
cook it back on. So as you can see, if I put the uh, top back on, even without any glue, it's a fully functioning model. There's no, absolutely no trouble with it holding its place. It's well supported, well balanced, absolutely perfect as it is. And it's, as I said, it's just a lot easier for transporting it <clears throat> and painting it. If I rotate it around there, I could just put the model and you can see what it looks like. She can stand on the front step here and she can stand here as well as in the actual dais itself. Uh, one of the main things I quite like about this model is if you've got uh, siblings, younger siblings, or perhaps uh, children who want to get into building some scenery with you, this is probably one of the best models to start with. The pieces are really chunky for little hands, they're going to have no trouble putting the uh, pieces on and just letting it rest as it is. So they'd feel a really good sense of accomplishment, they've built a really big, good looking model. So yeah, if you've got people you want to introduce to the hobby, I would definitely recommend them doing this, doing this one with you. It's a really satisfying model to put together. And that's the end of our Ruins of Elixir building review. And just to finish, I just want to show you what these models look like compared to some other models currently available in the scenery range. Uh, here we have the Eternity Stair. This was uh, originally available with the Storm of Chaos uh, battle tome that came out with uh, Warhammer Fantasy as it was then, as well as one of the older Balewind Vortex models. I think the newer models are essentially the same, just slightly different in terms of uh, the plastic they use. So as you can see, a similar scale to the new scenery models. I think the uh, they fit in really well. Just, and uh, I'll just put a model on there for you. So I would definitely recommend this set if you want to get into more scenery. It works with any existing scenery you might have in terms of scale. The plastic is, um, if you haven't done any scenery before from uh, Warhammer, the, the plastic they use for, the, for these models is slightly thicker than uh, miniature plastic, but it still has quite a lot of details it's, and uh, the thicker nature means it's quite sturdy, it's going to hold itself together. In my next video I am going to be talking briefly about the Dominion of Chaos Battle Tomb. This is a completely optional book with just some extra things in, but it has the individual rule sets for each of these models. As I mentioned in my original video, they do actually come on pamphlets in the box with the instruction on how to build, but the model rules are really small. They're just this one column down here, as it's got um, all the other languages so for each column. So I'm going to do this review for those who might be interested in getting this as well. Thanks for watching.